Hello there, humans of these earthlings, wherever you are, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and if you're lucky enough indeed to be doing it too. Chances are that you've heard about this tank already. This is the Object 252U, and it's the Tier 8 Premium Heavy that is coming under pretty heavy fire from the Blitz community for being a pay-to-win tank, or a derivative of a pay-to-win tank. Well, it's a derivative term. Um, <laughs> I just, anyway, I digress, as I often do. I want to talk to you today about the good things about this tank, uh, the bad things, a little bit about its place within the Blitz, well, the game of Blitz, and uh, how you can both kill it and how you can both make yourself very, very tough. Now, the most notorious thing about this tank is not the damage output, although it does have a little bit of a bonus there. It's got a 420 Alpha gun, which really plays into the 122 millimeter gun. It's got really plays into the uh, the whole idea of peekaboom tanking, where you basically pull a shot out of the enemy and then duck around the corner and fire. And the higher alpha, the more effective peekaboom is because it's easier just to take one shot to deliver all your damage than it is to take two or three. Like say you're a 75 millimeter gun on a uh, T7 medium. But the really interesting thing about this tank is the armor profile is ridiculous and you can actually angle it up like this, even though it has a pike nose because the upper plate, which is 130 millimeters, is so ridiculously steeply angled. Uh, and if you angle it and wiggle it and jiggle it, you can be uh, assured of getting some crazy bounces that you don't really deserve. That being said, uh, it is not the impervious monster it may seem from clips like this. That, that IS-5 is firing HE at me. And uh, it's one of the reasons why he's going to go down there. Uh, I want to talk to you about the big issues with this tank. And one of the things that you'll see me doing constantly throughout this video is... I'm driving forward, but I'm driving to try and face hug the tanks in front of me because your lower glacis is bloody enormous. This is the kind of situation you want to put yourself in, uh, where you are hull down and you've got an extremely long aim time on a very typically Russian gun. When I was on the live stream yesterday, I got a lot of shots landing with this gun that I didn't really expect to land. And people were saying, it doesn't, doesn't look like a Russian gun, but trust me, uh, since the live stream, it's regressed back to the mean and... Uh, it is very Russian in its both intent and <laughs> its performance. It goes all over the place. Um, but you can see I'm hull down. And the reason I'm hull down is this. Have a look at the lower glacis. It's enormous, but the upper glacis is so strong. Now I'm going to show you some comparable uh, armor profiles from its peers. Uh, tanks like the IS-6, for instance, which is another tier 8 premium Russian heavy. Look how much green is there. Now, this is viewed from the perspective of the T-34's tier 9 120mm gun, the T-53A1. And it's got about 250mm of pen, which is an awful lot of pen for a tier 8 heavy on its AP rounds. And you can see everyone else viewed from the T-34's perspective has green absolutely everywhere. And the T-34 has 10 degrees of gun depression. So it can easily get shots down onto that, even when face hugged. The only surprising uh, couple of tanks that you might not know about is if you go into the Chinese line, the glacial can actually be very, very strong like this. But if you look at the, the weak points on top of the glacial, it has very, very weak hatches. And there's the 112-2, uh, the IS-3 slash glacial crossover. So you can see the armor profile is indeed spectacular. The armor profile is like 300 plus millimeters all along the top deck, which is great when they are far away and you're hulled down. But what about when they start coming forward? Well, this is where things get very, very much a little bit dicier. And you've got to be a good player who at least understands the dynamics of the game. And this is where your safe space is quite literally so close to the enemy that he can only look at you on your upper glacis. And that's the T-34 that we were showing before. And he's firing APCR, which is nearly 300 millimeters of pen. And yet he cannot get shots down on the upper glacis. And the reason for that is that the upper glacis is just incredibly strong. Um, the other tank that will scream overpowered armor profile at tier 8 is this thing, the VK-100-01P. And indeed, it also has a weak lower glacis, though not as big as the Object 252U's uh, lower glacis. But what a lot of people don't seem to realize is that if you can't hit the lower glacis with this and you've got a big gun, it's a lot like the IS-4. Now, it's not something that I like to let the cat out of the bag with, but look at that. It's 240 HE pen from the 460 Alpha 130 that the VK is firing. And the reason for that is that the deck 
on these Soviet tanks is quite accessible if you splash the sides. Now, while you have spaced armor on the sides, if you hit that area there, you'll generally get some splash over onto the very, very weak deck because you are a low, low tank. That's the nature of these Russian heavies. They are low and they are derpy. There's the gun firing underneath the 30. But watch what I do here. There's three TDs around this corner. By all rights, I should be absolute, uh, you know, rat bait. But I'm just going to get so close to the Ferdinand that he can't do anything. And again, the only way he is going to be able to damage me eventually is by HE Splash. He gets the gun down. He just can't do anything with that upper plate and AP. And this is the secret to this tank. It's got a big derpy gun. It's got a reasonably mobile armor profile for something with this, uh, mob mobility profile for something with this much armor. There's 250 HE Splash. But if you splash it with HG, it will take a lot of damage. Uh, if you've got a TD or something like that, if you hit it in the right spots. Is it overpowered? Oh God, yeah. I think it's overpowered. But I dumped a bunch of win rate in it last night because what I did was I took it and I drove it as aggressively as I possibly could. And there's a few things to note. It's like an IS-8, but with a better armor profile, which is pretty scary and slightly less mobility and obviously an inferior gun to the IS-8's gun. But that's the kind of style of tank it is. You have to get it hull down. The lower glacis is just too glaring an issue for it to really work well in a brawl, a knife fight. Now, you can angle it, but if you give angles to other people, like and they get a shot at that lower glacis or even a drive wheel, they will go through. You are not a super tank. It's not like you're impervious. The low profile is very, very handy though in that you can see I can switch across areas like that and uh, and then get back around. Oh, unfortunate that uh, T-59 getting a tracking shot from the back door there. Someone in my team is still in the spawn as they, uh, <laughs> I mean, camp that spawn, baby. It's not going to hurt. And there's the gun depression or rather... The lack of gun depression really hurts it. Only six degrees of gun depression. But I mean, what do you expect? It's a Russian heavy. It shouldn't have a lot of gun depression. It's got armor. It's got the ability to knife fight and brawl. Face hug. The IS-3 Defender, the IS-5, the IS-3, the IS-6, the Glacial, all those tanks, they are a little bit worse than this tank in most regards. Uh, they have the same kind of gun, but slightly less alpha. They have the same kind of armor profile, but less of it. Uh, in practical sense, they are certainly not as good as this tank. And this tank has come under fire for being so expensive. And I understand that because it is whoppingly expensive. It's like $70 in Australia to buy this thing. Uh, but I would talk... And this is a, a very much a, an issue I have with the way the game monetizes. It's not a lot of microtransactions. Uh, Blitz tends to be more about big-ass dollops of transaction than it does the microtransactions that you will find in other games. And with that in mind, when you spend that much money on a tank, well, I think you'd expect it to be pretty freaking good. Like, why would you buy it if it wasn't that good? There's no way they'd sell it. And that's what upsets me when they sell crate tanks like the AMX-30B, which I don't think are very good at all, but are actually tier 10 tanks so that they get bought regardless. No, I don't have a problem with Wargaming doing this. Um, I think the tank's overpowered, and I think the balancing is a little bit off. And I think, to be honest, that Tier 8 premium heavies that are Russians in the mold or the vein of the IS-3 are just overdone. We've we're just had enough of them. Like, there's there's so many of them. You, you, Russian heavies at Tier 8, KV-5, KV-4, IS-5, IS-2SH, IS-3 Defender. Um, you know, your IS-6, your IS-6 Fearless, your IS-3. Yeah, object 252U. And then you switch over and you go to the Chinese tanks, which are nearly the same. WZ11, WZ110, WZ112 Glacial, WZ112-2. And what you end up with is a bit of a hodgepodge here. And this is the best of them. I mean, this is the best of them. The Defender has a case to make because it's an autoloader and it can do better things in bursts, but this is the best tank uh, out of those tanks. So if you're going to spend your money on a tank, like you want to buy a tank like the Smasher or this, which are pretty much very strong tanks compared to their competition and this is what power creep is boys and girls this is this is power creep in a nutshell the reason this premium tank is so good it wouldn't have been this tank if it was released two years ago or three years ago 
It wouldn't have needed to be this tank to compete and grab your dollar. But Wargaming exists as a business. Uh, it has people there, as I've said before, that pay their mortgages, that, um, that put their kids through school, that need bread, milk, and they don't work for free. So Wargaming has to make a profit, and this is how it happens. This is how power creep happens. The only way you're going to buy something now is if it's better than your I3 Defender or your I6. Because you've already got an I6. You've already got an I3 Defender. So this is what comes up. I don't find that a particularly horrible moral crisis, to be honest. Um, and I think sometimes we get very upset about these things when there's really no call for it. It will definitely make it harder for those who don't spend money on the game. Uh, there's no way around that. It's just the truth of it. Does that mean that it's broken? I don't know if it's broken. It's just super OP. It's really strong. Um, I want to show you one more game, and I want to discuss some of the problems that people have with dealing with this tank. Um, and a lot of it revolves around the mentality of the way we play Blitz. This tank is going to become more well-known as we progress. I hit shots like that yesterday. This is from the live stream. And people are like, that doesn't look Russian. And you're right. That, that, that did not look Russian at all. Uh, just coming around a corner, snapshotting an IS-5 in the uh, upper plate. Nice. And that's that looks Russian. <laughs> the thing that we have a problem with is I'm sitting here and I'm visible. Now, I had a, a game yesterday on the stream where I was in this tank and I, I was going caves on Black Goldville and two tanks appeared in the middle of the map and the whole team just converged on them like a schooling spawn of Muppet fish. Uh, that's what I call them in the stream, and that's what they were, because they saw tanks, so they tried to kill tanks. If you see this thing in this position, where it is hull down and you can't see the lower glacis, go somewhere else. Just don't be there. Like, it's, it's something that's really hard, and even I struggle with this. It's like, the reason the mouse is so good is that people queue up and try and outside scrape the mouse or try and beat it angle and you can't you're just playing into the hands of the guy driving the mouse or the guy driving the object 252u that is5 should have gone somewhere else so long ago i am keeping the object 704 i'm keeping the is5 uh tuned up that amx should never have been on the front line capping c it was ludicrous. So although this tank is looking like an absolute god right now, because I'm sitting in a tier 9 game, wrapping up half of their team um, by playing correctly, the fact of the matter is, this other team has played very poorly. That 704 being there is not right. Like, it's there was no need to have everything thrust this far forward, and now their flank is gone, and they've overextended. The IS-5 has gone into the middle, and I look like a bit of a genius because I'm in a really strong tank, and I'm using it for the purpose with, that it was designed to be used for. But that doesn't mean that I would have won this game if the other team had have played differently just because I'm driving an object 252. You, you, trust me, I lost plenty of games yesterday that were not any way, shape or form winnable, regardless of the tank I was driving at tier 8. And you'll note too that Lerva, I had a hit point trade with him then. 420 alpha on this thing, it's pretty broken. Uh, it, it not broken. It, it's just it's just too much. I don't see why it gets that extra 420 alpha, that extra 20 alpha, because I mean the the hit point trade we made there was 284 versus 400 and something, and that kind of a hit point trade will just really help this tank. In the margins is where you win and lose this game, guys. The percentages, and this is just a little bit better across the board than your defenders, your IS-6s, your IS-3s, your glacials. That also leaves it susceptible to certain tanks as well. Um, and I must say, it's an absolute slap in the face for anyone driving a tier seven medium. Uh, good luck with this thing. It's 150, 160 millimeters, even slightly angled on the lower glacis. You would wanna be very, very lucky if you're driving against this thing in a Comet or a T43 or a T3485 Rudy, or the other guy would want to be incredibly bad. I'm Bushka. Look after yourselves. Don't go yelling at me that the tank's OP. I know it's OP. I'm just telling you the stone cold facts and helping you get through the day. Look after yourselves and stay safe on the battlefield. Bye for now.